austere striving for the austerities. Then this occurred to me, what if I, with teeth clenched against teeth, with the tongue pressing on the palate, were to completely restrain, constrain and suppress one thought with another thought? Then I, with teeth clenched against teeth, with the tongue pressing on the palate, did completely restrain, constrain and suppress one thought with another thought. Then to me, with teeth clenched against teeth, with the tongue pressing on the palate, with complete restraint, constraint and suppression of one thought with another thought, sweat flowed from my armpits. Just as a strong man after seizing a very weak man by the head, or seizing him by the body, would restrain, constrain and suppress him, just so to me with teeth clenched against teeth, with the tongue pressing on the palate, with complete restraint, constraint and suppression of one thought with another thought, sweat flowed from my armpits. But although my energy was strenuous and unshaken, and mindfulness was attended to and unconfused, my body was overstressed, not quietened, and therefore the effort I made was overwhelmed by the strain of exertion. 5. The Breathless Meditation Then this occurred to me, what if I were to meditate on the breathless meditation? Then I blocked the in-breath and out-breath at the mouth and at the nose. Then to me, with the in-breath and the out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose, there was an excessive noise of wind escaping through the ears. Just as there is an excessive noise from blowing on a smith's bellows, just so, to me, with the in-breath and out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose, there was an excessive noise of wind escaping through the ears. But although for me energy was strenuous and unshaken, and mindfulness was attended to and unconfused, my body was overstressed, not quietened, and therefore the effort I made was overwhelmed by the strain of exertion. Then this occurred to me, what if I were to meditate on the breathless meditation? Then I blocked the in-breath and out-breath at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears. Then to me, with the in-breath and out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears, excessive winds raged within my head. Just as though a strong man were to cleave inside my head with a sharp pointed sword, just so to me with the in-breath and out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears, excessive winds raged within my head. But although for me energy was strenuous and unshaken, and mindfulness was attended to and unconfused, my body was overstressed, not quietened, and therefore the effort I made was overwhelmed by the strain of exertion. Then this occurred to me, what if I were to meditate on the breathless meditation? Then I blocked the in-breath and out-breath at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears. Then to me, with the in-breath and out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears, there was an excessive headache in my head. Just as though a strong man were to tie a turban on my head with a strong thong of leather, just so, to me, with the in-breath and out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears, there was an excessive headache in my head. But although for me energy was strenuous and unshaken, and mindfulness was attended to and unconfused, my body was overstressed, not quietened, and therefore the effort I made was overwhelmed by the strain of exertion. Then this occurred to me, what if I were to meditate on the breathless meditation? 
Then I blocked the in-breath and out-breath at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears. Then to me, with the in-breath and out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears, excessive winds cut through my stomach. Just as though a butcher or a butcher's apprentice were to cut through the stomach with a sharp butcher's knife, just so, to me, with the in-breath and out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose and the ears, excessive winds cut through my stomach. But although for me energy was strenuous and unshaken, and mindfulness was attended to and unconfused, my body was overstressed, not quietened, and therefore the effort I made was overwhelmed by the strain of exertion. Then this occurred to me, what if I were to meditate on the breathless meditation? Then I blocked the in-breath and out-breath at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears. Then to me, with the in-breath and out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears, there was an excessive fever inside the body. Just as though two strong men, after seizing a very weak man with their arms, were to burn and scorch him with embers, so for me, with the in-breath and out-breath blocked at the mouth and at the nose and at the ears, there was an excessive fever inside the body. But although for me energy was strenuous and unshaken, and mindfulness was attended to and unconfused, my body was overstressed, not quietened, and therefore the effort I made was overwhelmed by the strain of exertion. Further, this occurred to the guards after seeing me. The ascetic Gotama has died. This occurred to some guards. The ascetic Gotama has not died. He is dying. This occurred to some guards. The ascetic Gotama has not died. He is not dying. The ascetic Gotama is worthy. It is in this way that the worthy one lives. Then I rejected those guards, saying, Why should I do that? 6. The Fasting Then this occurred to me, What if I were to take food little by little, measure by measure, whether it be mung bean soup or vet soup or chickpea soup or pea soup? Then I took food little by little, measure by measure, whether mung bean soup or vet soup or chickpea soup or pea soup. Then, as I took food little by little, measure by measure, whether mung bean soup or vet soup or chickpea soup or pea soup, this body became excessively emaciated. Just like vine knots or bamboo knots, so were my limbs both great and small through having so little food. Just like a camel's foot, so did my buttocks become through having so little food. Just like a twisted vine, so did my backbone become twisted through having so little food. Just like an old hall in which the main beam is rotten and broken, so did my ribs become rotten and broken through having so little food. Just like in a deep pool, the stars in the water are seen lying deep and distant, so in the sockets of my eyes, the pupils of my eyes were seen lying deep and distant through having so little food. Just like a freshly cut bitter gourd will become withered and shrunken through wind and heat, so did the skin of my head become withered and shrunken through having so little food. Then thinking, I will touch the skin of my stomach, I took a hold of my backbone. Thinking, I will touch my backbone, I took a hold of the skin of my stomach. So far did the skin of my stomach and my backbone stick together through having so little food. Then thinking, I will pass excrement or urine. I fell down face forward right there through having so little food. 
Then I rubbed this body and my limbs comfortably with my hand. Then as I rubbed my limbs with my hand, hair that was rotten at the root fell out of my body through having so little food. Further, this occurred to men after seeing me. The ascetic Gotama is black, and to some men this occurred. The ascetic Gotama is not black, the ascetic Gotama is brown. And to some men this occurred. The ascetic Gotama is not black, he is not brown. The ascetic Gotama has golden skin. So far was the pure and bright colour of my skin spoiled through having so little food. 7. More Extreme Austerities I was aware of living the spiritual life endowed with four factors. I was one who lived austere, supremely austere. I was one who lived rough, supremely rough. I was one who lived avoiding, supremely avoiding. I was one who lived secluded, supremely secluded. This was my austerity there. I was without clothes, living freely, licking my hands, not one who came when called, not one who stopped when called. I did not take food offered, nor allotted, nor when invited. I did not accept from the rim of a pot, I did not accept from the rim of a bowl, not across a threshold, not across a stick, not across a pestle. Not from where two were eating, not from one pregnant, not from one feeding with the breast, not from a woman in the midst of men, not in a place advertised, not from where it was made ready, not from where flies were swarming. I did not accept fish nor meat, I did not drink liquor nor wine nor fermented drinks. I had but one house or one morsel. I had but two houses or two morsels. I had but three houses or three morsels. I had but four houses or four morsels. I had but five houses or five morsels. I had but six houses or six morsels. I had but seven houses or seven morsels. I survived from one saucer. I survive from two sources. I survive from three sources. I survive from four sources. I survive from five sources. I survive from six sources. I survive from seven sources. I ate food once a day. I ate food once in two days. I ate food once in three days. I ate food once in four days. I ate food once in five days. I ate food once in six days. I ate food once in seven days, and so on, and up to half a month. I dwelt applying and devoting myself to eating food methodically. I was one who ate only vegetables. I was one who ate only millet. I was one who ate only grain. I was one who ate only rice. I was one who ate only water plants. I was one who ate only husks. I was one who ate only scum. I was one who ate only punak. I was one who ate only grass. I was one who ate only cow dung. I was one who survived on forest roots and fruits. I was one who fed on fallen fruit. I was one who wore only hemp. I was one who wore only hemp and admixture. I was one who wore only charnel rags. I was one who wore only dust heap rags. I was one who wore only bark. I was one who wore only hides. I was one who wore only cheetah hide. I was one who wore only kusa grass strips. I was one who wore only bark strips. I was one who wore only wooden slips. I was one who wore only hair blankets. I was one who wore only horsehair blankets. I was one who wore only owl's wings. 
I was one who uprooted hair and beard. I dwelt applying myself and devoting myself to uprooting hair and beard. I was one who stood continuously and refused seats. I was one who squatted and I dwelt applying and devoting myself to squatting. I was one who lay on thorns. I was one who prepared a bed of thorns to lie on. I lived applying and devoting myself to submerging in water three times in the evening. Thus, thus in such various ways I dwelt applying and devoting myself to mortification and affliction. Such was my austerity. This was my roughness there. After countless years, mud and dirt has accumulated on the body of the bark of a tree. And just as after countless years on the stump of a tindica tree, mud and dirt has accumulated on the bark of the tree, so also after countless years mud and dirt had accumulated on my body just like the bark of a tree. But this did not occur to me. Indeed, I should brush off with my hand this mud and dirt, or others should brush off with their hand this mud and dirt. This didn't occur to me. Such was my roughness. This was my avoidance there. I was mindful in going forwards. I was mindful in going back. I dwelt with sympathy even for a drop of water thinking, let me not cause pain towards small creatures in inaccessible places. Such was my avoidance. This was my seclusion there. I lived after entering into a certain wilderness. Whenever I saw a cowherder or a herdsman, someone gathering grass or someone gathering sticks or a woodsman, from wood to wood, from thicket to thicket, from vale to vale, from plateau to plateau I fled. Why is that? I thought, do not let them see me, do not let me see them. Just as a wild animal having seen men, from wood to wood, from thicket to thicket, from vale to vale, from plateau to plateau, flees. So, whenever I saw a cowherder or a herdsman, someone gathering grass, or someone gathering sticks, or a woodsman, from wood to wood, from thicket to thicket, from vale to vale, from plateau to plateau, I fled. Why is that? I thought, do not let them see me, do not let me see them. Such was my seclusion. 8. Even more austerities. When the cows and the cowherders had left the cowshed, after approaching that place on all fours, I ate the cow dung of whatever young calves and suckling calves were there. And for as long as my own urine and excrement was not exhausted, I ate my own urine and excrement. Such was my greatly disgusting food. Having entered a certain fearful wooded thicket, I lived there. There would be fear of that fearful wooded thicket. And when whoever is not without lust entered into that thicket, all his hair would stand on end. During the cold winter nights, in between the eights, at the time of the snowfall, I lived in the open by night during the nights, and by day in the wooded thicket. And during the last month of the hot season, by day I lived in the open, and at night in the wooded thicket. Further, these truly wonderful verses, unheard previously in the past, occurred to me. Scorched and frozen, solitary in the fearful wood, naked without fire to sit by, the sage is intent on his search. 
I made my bed in the charnel ground and reclined on the bones of corpses. After approaching me, the cowherder's sons spat, urinated, threw mud and pushed straws into my ears. But I do not recall an unwholesome thought arising towards them. Such was my abiding in equanimity. 9. Purity through eating Now there are some ascetics and Brahmins who say this, have this view, there is purity through eating. And they say this, we survive on red date. They eat red date, they eat red date powder, they drink red date juice, they enjoy countless kinds of red date. But I recall surviving on just one red date a day for food. It may occur to you, at that time red date was very large, but it should not be seen like that. At that time, at the most, the red date was as it is nowadays. Because of only eating one red date for food, my body became exceedingly thin. Just like vine knots or bamboo knots, so were my limbs both great and small through having so little food. Just like a camel's foot, so did my buttocks become through having so little food. Just like a twisted vine, so did my backbone become twisted through having so little food. Just like an old hall in which the main beam is rotten and broken, so did my ribs become rotten and broken through having so little food. Just like in a deep pool, the stars in the water are seen lying deep and distant, so in the sockets of my eyes, the pupils of my eyes were seen lying deep and distant through having so little food. Just like a freshly cut bitter gourd will become withered and shrunken through wind and heat, so did the skin of my head become withered and shrunken through having so little food. Then thinking, I will touch the skin of my stomach, I took a hold of my backbone. Thinking, I will touch my backbone, I took a hold of the skin of my stomach. So far did the skin of my stomach and my backbone stick together through having so little food. Then thinking, I will pass excrement or urine. I fell down face forward right there through having so little food. Then I rubbed this body and my limbs comfortably with my hand. Then as I rubbed my limbs with my hand, hair that was rotten at the root fell out of my body through having so little food. Now there are some ascetics and Brahmins who say this, have this view, there is purity through eating. They say this, we survive on mung bean. They eat mung bean, they eat mung bean powder, they drink mung bean juice, they enjoy countless kinds of mung bean. But I recall surviving on just one mung bean a day for food. It may occur to you, at that time mung bean was very large, but it should not be seen like that. At that time, at the most, the mung bean was as it is nowadays. Because of only eating one mung bean for food, my body became exceedingly thin. Just like vine knots or bamboo knots, so were my limbs both great and small through having so little food. Just like a camel's foot, so did my buttocks become through having so little food. Just like a twisted vine, so did my backbone become twisted through having so little food. Just like an old hall in which the main beam is rotten and broken, so did my ribs become rotten and broken through having so little food. 
Just like in a deep pool, the stars in the water are seen lying deep and distant, so in the sockets of my eyes, the pupils of my eyes were seen lying deep and distant from having so little food. Just like a freshly cut bit of gourd will become withered and shrunken through wind and heat, so did the skin of my head become withered and shrunken through having so little food. Then thinking, I will touch the skin of my stomach, I took a hold of my backbone. Thinking, I will touch my backbone, I took a hold of the skin of my stomach. So far did the skin of my stomach and my backbone stick together through having so little food. Then thinking, I will pass excrement or urine. I fell down face forward right there through having so little food. Then I rubbed this body and my limbs comfortably with my hand. Then as I rubbed my limbs with my hand, hair that was rotten at the root fell out of my body through having so little food. Now there are some ascetics and Brahmins who say this, have this view, there is purity through eating. They say this, we survive on sesame. They eat sesame, they eat sesame powder, they drink sesame juice, they enjoy countless kinds of sesame. But I recall surviving on just one sesame a day for food. It may occur to you, at that time sesame was very large, but it should not be seen like that. At that time, at the most, the sesame was as it is nowadays. Because of only eating one sesame for food, my body became exceedingly thin. Just like vine knots or bamboo knots, so were my limbs both great and small through having so little food. Just like a camel's foot, so did my buttocks become through having so little food. Just like a twisted vine, so did my backbone become twisted through having so little food. Just like an old hall in which the main beam is rotten and broken, so did my ribs become rotten and broken through having so little food. Just like in a deep pool, the stars in the water are seen lying deep and distant, so in the sockets of my eyes, the pupils of my eyes were seen lying deep and distant through having so little food. Just like a freshly cut bit of gourd will become withered and shrunken through wind and heat, so did the skin of my head become withered and shrunken through having so little food. Then thinking, I will touch the skin of my stomach, I took a hold of my backbone. Thinking, I will touch my backbone, I took a hold of the skin of my stomach. So far did the skin of my stomach and my backbone stick together through having so little food. Then thinking, I will pass excrement or urine. I fell down face forward right there through having so little food. Then I rubbed this body and my limbs comfortably with my hand. Then as I rubbed my limbs with my hand, hair that was rotten at the root fell out of my body through having so little food. Now there are some ascetics and Brahmins who say this, have this view, there is purity through eating. They say this, we survive on chickpeas. They eat chickpea, they eat chickpea powder, they drink chickpea juice, they enjoy countless kinds of chickpea. But I recall surviving on just one chickpea a day for food. It may occur to you, at that time chickpea was very large, but it should not be seen like that. At that time, at the most, the chickpea was as it is nowadays. Because of only eating one chickpea for food, my body became exceedingly thin. 
just like vine knots or bamboo knots, so were my limbs both great and small through having so little food. Just like a camel's foot, so did my buttocks become through having so little food. Just like a twisted vine, so did my backbone become twisted through having so little food. Just like an old hall in which the main beam is rotten and broken, so did my ribs become rotten and broken through having so little food. Just like in a deep pool, the stars in the water are seen lying deep and distant, so in the sockets of my eyes, the pupils of my eyes were seen lying deep and distant through having so little food. Just like a freshly cut bitter gourd will become withered and shrunken through wind and heat, so did the skin of my head become withered and shrunken through having so little food. Then, thinking, I will touch the skin of my stomach, I took a hold of my backbone. Thinking, I will touch my backbone, I took a hold of the skin of my stomach. So far did the skin of my stomach and my backbone stick together through having so little food. Then thinking I will pass excrement or urine, I fell down face forward right there through having so little food. Then I rubbed this body and my limbs comfortably with my hand. Then as I rubbed my limbs with my hand, hair that was rotten at the root fell out of my body through having so little food. By such conduct, by such practice, by doing such austerities, I did not attain states beyond ordinary human beings, a distinction of what is truly noble knowledge and insight. Why is that? I did not attain the noble wisdom, which noble wisdom, when attained, is noble and leads out, and leads one who practices rightly to the destruction of suffering.